Hello, this is Bern, and in this video I'm going to reveal the top 5 covert red flags you're probably missing when you date men that are causing you to remain single and waste your precious time and life force with guys who are not the right fit for you. It's relatively easy to spot a blatantly obvious red flag. For example, you meet a guy and he looks 20 years older than the pictures in his profile. Well, he was obviously lying about his age. Or maybe you spot in his hand and you see that on his ring finger, there's a sun mark that lets you know he probably just took off the ring five minutes ago before he met you. Maybe he lies so frequently and so often that you catch him in his lies and you're like, no thanks, I'm out of this. But what about when you feel a lot of emotion towards someone, you feel like there's something great going on, and you metaphorically smash your head against a glass door that you didn't see? If that's taking place with men right now, meaning they're constantly ghosting you when you felt something serious and strong was taking place, or maybe you're discovering something that was so different from what your original assumption was that it makes you feel so disappointed and hurt. This video is gonna show you how to spot some less than obvious red flags, some more nuanced flags that will allow you to be able to stand up for yourself and to not go into rabbit holes that will get you to a foreign land that you're not happy with. Now, I'm not here to bash men. Some men are machiavellically planning plots to get women in bed and lying about the whole thing. I would say that the majority of men are not like that. The majority of men are just somewhat unconscious about what they're doing, which is why it's so important for you, because you want something serious, to be clear about what may be happening so you can bring it up and either allow them to step up or move on and connect with somebody else who will get you what you want. Hello, my name is Bern, and if you'd like to learn how to attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes like this one that will show you how to attract your ideal relationship by being the best version of yourself. The first covert red flag is what I call the empty infusiveness punch. And I'm gonna give you an analogy to illustrate what this really feels like. Imagine that you're scrolling down through Instagram and you spot a very good looking guy who seems pretty successful with three of his friends on a private plane Maybe they're toasting to champagne. And then later on you find out that that wasn't a real plane, that they're in, the, in a crappy basement recording this with props. Now, you would say, who would fall for that? Well, let me turn this around and share with you what might be happening right now. Maybe you connect with someone and you feel like the idea of this guy is really close to what you're looking for. Maybe he's physically really attractive. You feel like he has his financial stuff in order. You like the way he talks. You feel he's sophisticated and intelligent and he's connecting with you, sharing things like, you are so beautiful, I can't get over how beautiful you are. Maybe you met him two weeks ago, and he, next time he sees you, he says, I have not been able to stop thinking about you. Maybe he says to your face, you are so different from everyone else I met, or I've never felt this way with anyone ever in my life. Or maybe he says, I feel like I've known you from another life, like we have so many things in common. So when a guy is sharing this without the actual truth of knowing you and you've been on a desert island hoping for some clean water and he's offering you the clean water, then it's going to be hard for you not to fall for it. I'm not saying he's trying to overtly manipulate you, but when he shares things like this, the effusiveness empty punch is like you feel the punch in your heart, but there's no substance to back it up. There is one factor that you can't do without if you want a serious relationship, and that is time. So understand that when a guy shares these things, instead of jumping to like, this is awesome and it's happening, is like, okay, well, let's step back a little bit and make sure that this is sustainable, that what he's saying right now is not just something that makes him feel great and makes me feel great as a result of him saying it, validated, seen, but that it really has the foundation of truth. Number two, is what I call the lying by omission stunt, which many guys are great at doing. Imagine that you're at a friend's house and waiting for your friend and you're running a little late. Finally, she calls you to say, hey, uh, there's a lot of traffic, I can't get home and you have to leave quickly. When you leave quickly, your backpack hits a vase at the entry and you feel a little ashamed, you don't have time to clean it up and you just forget about it, so you leave. And then maybe two days later, your friend calls you to say, hey, uh, I'm so sad because my cat dropped 
my, the, my, the vase my grandma gave me before she died. And instead of saying, no, it was me, you just stay quiet. That is the definition of lying by omission. So there's two types of lying. The first type of lying is when you share something deceivingly to manipulate someone. The second one is where you just omit information, had the person have that bit of data, they would have made a different decision. So how do guys lie by omission? Well, sometimes there's mental issues that are serious in their lives and they just don't bring them up. Maybe they have this financial challenging situation that's taking place and they don't say anything about it. Maybe they don't claim a marital status but they're still married and they haven't told you about it. The antidote to experiencing this type of lying by omission is first of all, when there's a strong sense of chemistry, make sure that you take longer to continue connecting with the guy physically so that you're not blinded by untruths. Second, that you ask better questions through time to recognize inconsistencies in between what they're saying and what they're doing. Anyone can lie to you, but if you're smart about pacing yourself, asking different questions, and seeing the connection between what they say and what they do, you can spot those untruths more, more easily. The third red flag that you need to be on the lookout for is vagueness in vision. Vagueness in vision means that a guy is unwilling or unable to share specifically and precisely what he's looking for in an intimate relationship. And the reason why this is so important is because if a guy doesn't know what he wants or can't express it, he shouldn't be dating you. If you're a conscious woman who knows clearly and without doubts what you're looking for, and he isn't someone who's willing to, to share it or doesn't know what he wants, then he's wasting your freaking time. Now, the fertile soil for this to take place is when you don't have enough self-esteem at a time, and you feel like if you were to share what you really want, that the guy would get scared and run away, then you might keep yourself quiet and not share it. Or maybe sometimes you feel like there's a strong chemistry. So it's almost like your brain is saying, I need to ask these questions, but your heart is saying, well, you haven't felt this good in so long. Shut up. Let me feel this for a little longer. <laughs> and if you do that, you may not ever ask the question. When you do, it might be too late. Before I go into red flags number four and five and show you a list of questions that can help you wake up to this red flags more easily, I want to make an invitation to you. If you're a single woman watching this video, my hypothesis is you may not fully understand the true reason why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken over 12 years of helping women find love in every continent and with every kind of love challenge you can imagine and put it in a small quiz that you can take in about 60 seconds. So if you want to figure out your answer, all you have to do is go to the first link on the description of this video. You will see a page that looks like this answer a few simple questions and within 60 seconds, you'll not only have the number one reason you're still single, but also based on your specific challenge, what is the number one action you can take starting today to reverse this trend and to attract the guy you want. Red flag number four is what I call the you're too serious manipulation tactic. The you're too serious manipulation tactic means that you might need to bring up things that are important in the communication. Maybe he did something that didn't feel right. Maybe there's a question that's unanswered that without knowing that answer, it's hard for you to open up and be vulnerable with him. Maybe you saw him react in a way that, was, that felt shady to you, to another human being. Maybe he flirted a little too much with someone. Now, if when you bring things up to him, his response instead of being open is to get defensive and to reverse this on you and to say that you're too serious, you're too needy, you're too weird, you're too intense, then that's the red flag because you might stop asking those questions thinking that you're the one being insensitive instead of understanding that he is not willing to share the truth with you. Now, to make this worse, if you ask something like this and you get into a maybe a little bit of a heated discussion and then he stops texting you so frequently, maybe he texts you every morning and then for the next two days he doesn't text you. Or maybe he had a plan with you to go do something fun on Saturday and he lets you know just coincidentally that he has to cancel that because he has a lot of work that came up. When he starts punishing you for bringing things up in a way that's healthy, then you understand that this guy is manipulating the situation so that you don't bring intense things to the table. Now, let me be super clear. You need to get your needs met through other human beings in a relationship. If you could only get your needs met through yourself, then you have, would have no need for relationships. The whole 
frame of an intimate relationship is there's needs you cannot meet on your own and you're going to have to meet them through the partner. If you can't meet them because the person is unwilling to listen to you, that is a huge red flag. If you take his coldness as a sign that you shouldn't rock the boat and that you should just stay quiet to continue receiving his praise and his connection, then you're doing yourself a disservice. Number five is what I call the false familiar intimacy. There's two types of false familiar intimacy. The first one has to do when it's very early on and the guy who you like and who has chemistry with you gets closer to you than you want. Maybe the way he touches you, maybe the, the things he assumes about you, maybe the way he talks to you, the, 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 I mean, he's calling you babe and he's not, you're nothing to him yet, right? When you connect with someone who's physically or verbally uh, intimate with you in ways that are not really backed up by the length of time, you might start feeling like you know him better than you do. The second one is what I call the consistency fallacy. And that means you connect with a guy and maybe he's not really taking action to move things forward. Maybe he's not really committed to getting to know you, but he calls you every day or he texts you in the morning, he texts you at night, and then before you used to have weekends on your own, and now he maybe calls you for a few minutes, or you feel sad, and he's like, hey, here I, here I am, and he talks to you for a few minutes, and then he has to go. Now, if that little dropper of water that you're getting is enough for you to stop being thirsty, that's a big problem. So I wanna share three questions that can help you more powerfully recognize when something like this is taking place. The first question I need you to ask when you connect with someone and you feel like things are maybe feeling intense, maybe intense in a good way, is how long have you known him? How long have you known this guy? If it's been early and if it's been a month, it's been two months, like you don't really know this guy. So I want you to pace yourself more, both on the physical front and also on telling yourself that you found your guy. It might be true that you found him, but you will know through time. Number two is how clear are you on what he wants and what is the time frame for what he wants. If you don't know what he wants or his time frame, then you're deluding yourself by feeling intensely connected to him. And the third one is how does he react when shit hits the fan? When things get difficult, when you bring something up, how does he react? Now, if you said, well, that hasn't happened yet, then you have no idea who, he's, who he really is. If you haven't had uh, disagreements, if you haven't had uh, something challenging taking place and seeing and witnessing him, does he run away? Does he stand up? Does he open his heart? Does he get avoidant? When you don't understand that, then you're mostly falling for a projection or a fantasy. Doesn't mean that he may not be a great guy when these things happen, but don't tell yourself you know him until he actually shows you when things are tough, that he has the character and the stamina to be your lifelong partner. Hope this is helpful and useful. If you enjoyed this video, click thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.